Welcome to Cocoa Maker episode 6. I'm here with Eduardo and John and we're going to be teaching you the basis of cocoa. This week, we're going to be teaching you about arrays, dictionaries, and property lists. Arrays are an easy way to manage a collection of objects. Arrays are index based and you can manage them by adding objects or removing objects. An S array is a read only array. You can't change it at, after it's created. And as multiple array is an editable array. You can remove objects, add objects, modify objects without having to create a whole entire new array to change it. And its value is a way to put objects from C such as characters, time, stamps, and stuff like that. And its number is a way to put booleans, integers, and floats. Dictionaries are like array where you can manage a collection of objects, but it's name based instead of index based, which means you can call an object by a name. The classes for dictionaries is NS dictionary, which is read only, and it's mutable dictionary, which is read and write like I explained with the array. And it's the same way to get numbers and objects from C as I explained inside of the arrays. One thing you may be wondering about is how do you save object to your disk? There are many different ways, but the most easiest way is to put an array and save them as a property list. The property list can be XML or binary based. In this array and in this dictionary already has methods to save them. If you wanted to get a binary based property list, you would have to use NS property list serialization to save the object as a property list that is binary based. Property lists can only have these types of objects. In a string, in a dictionary, in its array, in its number, in its data, and in its date. If you want to get any other types of objects inside of a property list, you would have to use NS Archiver or NS Unarchiver to convert it into a NS data. Once you convert it into an NS data, you can save it into the property list and read it with NS Unarchiver to put it back into an object. I would explain how to use NS Archiver and NS Unarchiver in a later episode. Let me give you an example on how to use property lists and its arrays and its dictionaries and and its property list serializer. In the main function I have the NS auto release pool as usual. On the first line of the code, I'm logging out that this is an array that we're making. We're making the array with NS array, array with objects, and then we're passing orange, apple, and banana, along with new at the end to indicate that it's the end of the array. The next line we're going throughout the array with a for loop. I explained for loops in a podcast earlier. Let's see what the output is of this. And the output says array, orange, apple, and banana. Let's say that you wanted to sort an array. Here's how you do it. You pass the array you want to sort, and you call the method sorted array using selector. Selector means basically a reference of a method. The selector we're calling, or method we're calling, is compare. The compare method inside of NSString, NSOrdered ascending, NSOrdered descending, and NSOrdered same. And using that, the array knows which way to, uh, to sort it. Let's run this and see what the result is. And as you can see, it's sorting the array, apple, banana, and orange. Where before it was orange, apple, and banana. Now let's say that you wanted to save the pro it as a property list. The method to save it as a property list is write to file automatically. The way you call this is you, you call the method of the array, write to file, you pass it the, the, the path to the file you want as an in a string, which I'm saying the user home folder desktop array.plist. The argument automatically, if it's no, then it just saves over the file. 
If it's yes, then it saves the file, then replaces the file that's, uh, that you're saving it as. Let's see what the result is of this. And here is the plist file. If we open this, we will get the property list editor with the, all of the items in the array that we saved. Apple, banana, and orange in the array. If you open this with a text editor, such as text edit, you will get the actual XML of the file. If you want to read a property list, you just call the method of NS array or NS dictionary array with contents of file. And it would read array from the property list. A mutable array is a subclass of NS array, so you can use all the same methods that are inside of NS array, but it adds some methods such as add, insert, remove. What we're doing here is we're creating an NS mutable array by calling NS mutable array and the method array. And then we're calling the method add object of the mutable array. And we're adding an in the string apples, oranges, and bananas. To remove an object, you just go to and it's mutable array, remove object at index 1, which will remove oranges because it goes 0, 1, 2. Now let's see what the log out of this is. Here we are with NS mutable array, apple, oranges, bananas. Removing object oranges, and now it's apple and bananas. Now here is a dictionary. To create a dictionary, you call in this dictionary, dictionary with objects and keys, you can do dictionary with object for key, and it would be the same as that, but you can't add multiple of objects. So, here is what we're doing. We're saying oranges is the name, fruit is the type, and yes is the, is that it has seeds. And then we're logging out, adding the name of the type with the name of name and we're calling object for key type from the dictionary and object for key name with the dictionary. We're inserting into the multiple array the dictionary at index one. And here it is. Dictionary adding fruit with name oranges. And here it is, apple, oranges, seeds, one, f type, fruit, just as we expected. Now here is how you save a plist using NS plist serialization. Basically, it returns an NS data with the contents of the plist. You call NS plist serialization data from a property list, and you pass it an object such as a NS string, NS array, NS date, NS dictionary, whatever you want to pass it, and it would make it into an XML or binary format based on the format you put specify here. It would return an error if you pass it in a NS string. Then we just write out the data that was returned to a file, which I'm writing to the mutable array on my desktop and we're writing automatically just in case of an error during writing it would just not break anything that's currently there. Now let's test this and see what the output is. And here's the output. We get an NS array with apples and then a dictionary that has name of oranges, seeds with a boolean yes, type fruit, and then another string with bananas. The XML that was returned looks like this. You can go ahead and do some more testing on your own. Here is how a mutable dictionary works. We create a dictionary with NS mutable dictionary dictionary, which returns a blank dictionary. And then we set object salad as name, veggie as type, and then we're doing an estate date for the time. 
and it's number with billion no for seeds. And then we're adding, and we're saying that we're logging out that we're adding the type of type and the name with the name of name. Same thing as above. And then we're inserting it into the dic uh, the multiple dictionary at index of zero. That means at the very top of the dictionary. I mean the array. Now let's see the output. And as you can see here, multiple dictionary, adding veggie with name salad. At the very top of the array, there's salad, seeds, no, and the current time that it was at veggie, and then there's apples with the orange jizz type fruit, and bananas. Here is how you save a binary P list. We use NS property list serialization as we did before to save it as XML, and it returns data the same as above. We're calling the same method, but inst instead of NS property list XML format, we're doing binary format. And then we're saving it as binary.plist as above. Let's run this. And here's the result. We got a array with the dictionary inside of it, name salad, seeds, no, time, and type of vegetables. And then we got the string with apples and the dictionary with the oranges and the bananas. Here's what the actual raw data looks like. It's a little hard to read by uh, by yourself, which is why it's binary. That was Coco Maker. I'm James. I'm John. I'm Eduardo. If you have questions, please feel free to email me, and I would be sure to answer you one way or, or another. If you would like to visit our website and check out all the notes that I put up there, go to coco.mrkecklesmedia.com. Thank you for watching Coco Maker and enjoy programming on Coco.